You don't create better leaders. You just, you know, the leader leaves and things fall apart and say, oh, wasn't he a good leader? No, he was an achiever. We confuse achievement with leadership. Achievement is getting stuff done, and it's good. You got to get stuff done. Leadership is embedding the ability to get stuff done in your people when you're not even there. That's leadership. Leadership, when a leader leaves, the organization continues to do well. When an achiever leaves, the organization only does as well as the subsequent leader, right? Submarine doing well, CEO leaves, submarine does poorly. We say, oh, we really miss John. He was such a great leader. No, I say, no. If you're a great leader, he would have embedded whatever genius he had in his people, right? That's leadership. Here's my uh, Naval Academy. Who all went to the Naval Academy? All right, good. So, Naval Academy leadership book. Here's what it said. Leadership can be defined as the art, science, or gift by which a person is enabled and privileged to direct, direct the thoughts, plans, and actions of others in such a manner as to obtain and command their obedience, confidence, their respect, and loyal cooperation. I think this is totally inadequate. It's totally, it's absolutely incomplete. This is about telling people what to do. That's not leadership, that's just telling people what to do. Leadership is embedding whatever genius you have, whatever insights you have, whatever ability you have to get stuff done in your people. That's your legacy. Your legacy is not your name, it's what your people achieve. So here's something that's interesting. This is a wadi in Afghanistan, on the Pakistani border in Host province. And the officer in the middle there is the commanding officer of a provincial reconstruction team, which is a civil military team, has a USAID, State Department, uh, Army Reserves, Ar uh, Afghan Nationals. This was really sort of hodgepodge about 130 people. And this wadi uh, is, has their villages on both sides. Uh, and the tribe that lives there is called the Mondozai. The Mondozai do not have CAD camp. They don't have bulldozers. They don't have concrete. They don't have rebar. They don't have software engineers. They don't have structural engineers. But what they do have is a desire to con connect. And there's trade between these two villages. There's intermarriages. And so they want to cross. So, these, they build a bridge, and every, every time the wet season comes, the bridge gets washed away. And the year before this picture was taken, two children, two of their friends, were on that bridge when that bridge got washed away. So, in come the Americans. We can do anything. We can build a bridge, right? We're America. We have CAD CAM, we have computers, we have rebar, we have bulldozers. So Dave Adams says, we gets his team together, we're going to build this bridge. Yes, we are. And so they start assembling the equipment to build the bridge, and the Taliban start um, attacking the, the, the stores. You know, they blow up the uh, forklift and stuff like that. So the bridge is never going to get built this way. So what's the standard re response? Well, we'll build a fence. Well, that's not good enough. So we'll put some guards, and then we'll have a second line of fence, and then we'll put some mines and a little moat. And we're going to protect that gear. That's not what he did. This officer went to the two tribes, and he said, look, I can build a bridge, but you guys have to maintain security. Because the tribes know. He said, we will, we, we will be the heavies, but you guys have to tell us when there's Taliban in the area, when they, you think they're going to attack, and all that kind of stuff. Everyone, you know, eyeball, eyeball. And the tribes agreed. And that's what they did. And this is their bridge. It's still there. Dave Adams, the commanding officer of that provincial reconstruction team, is a submariner. He was the weapons officer on the USS Santa Fe. Three, now, three officers from the Santa Fe have been selected to be provincial provincial reconstruction team commanders. 
Out of all the officers we can pick in the Navy, SEALs, Special Forces, why in the world are we picking submariners? Submariners are geeks, right? I'm a geek. I like books. You know, it's because these, they were in this culture where they're creating, pe they're, engage, they're making people think. They're creating an environment where people think. Ten of the officers in the Santa Fe have now been either commanded their own submarines or selected to command their own submarines. It's a highly disproportionate number. And the reason I think that's happened is because even when they were junior officers or department heads, they were, they were being, they were thinking like commanding officers. So it was only natural that they would, Navy would select them to be future commanding officers. I got like two stories left. Um, a year after I took command, I was ordered to surface my submarine, which is, is your submarine commander, that you don't want, you know, you don't want to surface unless you're coming home. Surface my submarine and rendezvous with a helicopter that was containing 11 SEALs, and we would take these SEALs and we would take them someplace, and they, we would surface, and they would take their uh, inflatables Boats, they go do something with the bad guys, to the bad guys, to the bad guys, and then we come back out. And I took this picture on the bridge. This is the SEALs uh, um, actually coming onto the submarine. And, and here's the point. I didn't, you know, I didn't have to do that because I was taking the submarine. When, I, when you take the submarine and you surface it and you launch these SEALs, yeah, I could have been way out from the beach and made it hard for them to get to the beach, or we could have gotten really tight. And, and, but that puts my ship at risk, more risk, than just sort of sitting way out here. That's the easy way. And the reason that we, as commanding officers of ships in the Navy today, go close and tight and let the seals or whatever else happens is because we know. We know our ships will not fail us. We know that those welds have been welded by people like you. And that those pumps have been assembled properly. And the bearing's not going to start going out and start vibrating and create an acoustic vulnerability. Now we're going to get detected and a patrol craft is going to come and cause us to be out of position so when the SEALs are coming off the beach, we won't be there. I'm not worried about that. And when I walk around and I see my 134 crew member and I look at them in the eye and I think about, I think about their wives and their children and I realize that what we do and the orders I give may result in their death and the widowing of their spouses, I weigh that against the fact that this submarine is built by Americans who intended to achieve excellence. My ship was built down at EB. Okay, so on our walkabouts, what are we going to do? We'll always be curious. We will achieve excellence, engage thinking, and create leaders. Samuel B. Roberts. Bill here, launched, 1986. 1985, someone was doing a weld. 1984, someone was assembling a package. 1986, someone was doing final fit out and testing. Here, they didn't know what was gonna happen to the Roberts. They, you, didn't know what was gonna happen to the Roberts. And on the 14th of April, 1988, she struck an Iranian M08 naval mine with 253 pounds of explosives. Rocked the ship up, caused fires, and the ship almost immediately filled with smoke. The Roberts did not sink, and there were zero casualties. And she came back here to Bath and was repaired. And the Roberts was built by people achieving excellence, not minimum standards. And so when I walked around the yard yesterday and I looked up at the Zoom wall 
and there's a welder up there, and I see the sparks flying, and I see the seam of the weld, and I'm thinking, we don't know what's going to happen to that ship in 20 years. That may be exactly where an Iranian silkworm missile or a Chinese um, you know, drone comes and impacts. But I sure hope that the person doing that weld is thinking that I'm here for excellence and that the sailors that, sa that sail in this ship will have the confidence that we've done right by them. And I certainly am confident that you will. Thank you very much.